Josh, we've talked a lot about some of these things that the, the Pharisees are being critical of Jesus. And then we have some examples that Christ is going to give of those specific things that he does. And then this declaration about him being the Lord of the Sabbath. Can we talk a little bit about those things? Yeah, absolutely. So verse 8 in Matthew chapter 12, For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And this is where we get the reference to Mark 2, 27 that we could also go to where the Savior says the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And so I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. This is the Savior taking back the Sabbath day. You've created all of these lists. You've created all of these laws. Now I'm going to say what's actually important. And so then he's going to depart the synagogue and then he's going to show by example what is important on the Sabbath day. Taylor. I love what he says back here in verse six to the Pharisees after explaining to them that if it's okay for the priest to be engaged at the temple in the work of God, verse six of chapter 12 of Matthew, but I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. So if it's okay for people to be working on the Sabbath day in the temple, I'm greater than the temple. I am the embodiment of God's work. And of course, this really gets the Pharisees quite enraged. Instead of saying, oh my gosh, the one we've been looking for is here. We should listen to him to get our hearts set straight. But then he gets into the synagogue and he's demonstrating what the kingdom of God is like. It's wholeness, it's healing, it's completion. And he gives examples where he heals people who are blind or dumb or withered hand. And of course, it's all about, is this work breaking these laws that the Pharisees invented, or is it actually doing God's work, which he's, which he's asked for all of us to be engaged in, in building the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm.